الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we would like to welcome the Hajj Rihan, Dr. Rihan here. Welcome back. I hope you remembered us all in your dua. May Allah accept from all of you, inshallah, all of us. Uh, early this week, we heard about the super storm, Sandy. Yes, I'm sure we all heard about it. I have a daughter who lives in New York, so I was, of course, very worried and concerned about her as well, and about the safety of all the others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us a story about a hurricane, a super storm, which lasted for eight days and seven nights on a community which was so prosperous but they were so arrogant and they were real tyrants. They never listened to the message of their prophet and the punishment was a severe, severe hurricane which destroyed them all. Whenever you hear the news, every and each TV channel will broadcast the event in different way. If you listen to BBC or Sky or CNN or Fox or Al Jazeera, Whatever channel you, you listen to, you will always find that they broadcast the event from a completely different angle. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did something very, very similar. When he was telling us the story of this hurricane, he mentioned it in so many chapters in the Quran, and every chapter concentrated on a different angle to prove that the Quran is not from Muhammad, والسلام, it is from Allah. If it was from Muhammad, there would have been only one style of reporting the news. So let's start firstly with Surah Al-Ankabut, chapter 29, verse 40, to mention something about how did Allah deal with different people when they commit so many sins and they don't repent or ask for forgiveness and the trans the, the, their transgression actually will reach a point which will start to disturb the balance of justice so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interferes to restore the balance. So let's start with verse 40. Rahim. أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ So we seized each one for his sins. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ حَاصِبًا وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَخَذَتْهُ الصَّيْحَةِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَغْرَقْنَا وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَظْلِمَهُمْ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ What does this mean? So we seized each one of his... We, we seized each one for his sins. Each community for their sins. Some we struck with a violent storm, a hurricane, a tornado. Some of them were overcome by a sudden blast, volcano. Some were swallowed up by the earth. The earth was open, and the whole community went down at the bottom of the earth. Some we drowned, like the people of Pharaoh and the people of Noah, and so on. God did not wrong them. They wronged themselves. <coughs> So, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he uses different methods to destroy communities when they are in sin and they do not repent and are just their God. Just as simple as that. In Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us there is another way of inflicting his punishment on his people by dividing us into factions and make us fight each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 65, Surah Al-An'am chapter 6, قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ 
أو يلبسكم شيعا ويذيق بعضكم بأس بعض انظر كيف نصرف الآيات لعلهم يفقهون So he has the power to send the punishment on you from above your heads or from beneath your feet. And the punishment can be sudden punishment. Nobody would expect you are sleeping in bed and suddenly an earthquake hits and all the house is being completely destroyed and people are homeless or are dead. Or to divide you into sects and make you taste one another violence as it is happening now in Syria, as it is happening in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Egypt, in Sudan, in the African West Desert, it's happening. People were divided into sects, into different groups, and they are fighting and killing <coughs> each other. Or to divide you in sects and make you taste one another's violence. See how we explain our revelations in various ways so that they may understand. Now, Let's move now to the hurricane. And I want you to imagine, oh, I'm going to talk about Sandy. By the time it reached the land, it became Andy. Yeah? It lost the S. So let's now talk about uh, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cover the news of a city, a very, very famous city in the south of Arabia. Now who can remind me the name of the city? The name of the city. These people came after Nuh. After Noah. Who can remind me of the name of the city? A city which had very tall pillars, wonderful palaces, wonderful structure. The people were so tall, it was so prosperous, but they were so arrogant and so nasty. And when they revenged, they were tyrant in the way they struck. So who can remind me of the name no, Sana'a is in Yemen now. Sana'a already exists. No. A name of a town in the Quran mentioned south of Arabia, where Yemen is now. Yes, this is where Yemen is now. No. 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 Yeah, okay. Aram. 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 The name of the town was Aram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Fajr, chapter 98. ألم ترى كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد. So the tribe, the tribe was called عاد, عاد with a, عاد. The prophet was Hud. Remember Hud. Prophet Hud was sent to قبيلة عاد. He was one of their brethren. He was was from the same tribe. And the town was called إرم ذات العماد with pillars. Magnificent, mighty pillars. Where is it today? Under the sand. It is covered under the sand. So let me read this verse to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting the Prophet. When Quraysh were fighting against him and they were refusing to accept the message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every now and then, he would comfort him. He, he would tell him that victory is coming, Muhammad. Don't you worry. If these people are causing you problems, I have the power to destroy Quraysh in the same way as I destroyed those before them. And he gave him the example. Alam tara bi'ad. Haven't you heard how did your Lord deal with the tribe of Ad? The city of Iram with lofty pillars. The like of which has never been created in any other town on earth. And it will never come back again. It was like a landmark at that time. Great civilization. I think there was a film called uh, Atlantis. I think the lost city, something like that. A city which was completely buried under the sand dunes in the southern of Arabia. <coughs> This tract of southern Arabia was once very prosperous and contains ruins and inscriptions. The British Museum published in September 1937, volume, uh, in vo volume 11, uh, they found, uh, let me read, quite recently, a bronze lion's head and a bronze piece of gutta 
with a Sabian inscription found in Najran have been described in the British Museum Quarterly, Volume 11, Number 4, September 1937. And they are still excavating there, actually. But I think because of the, uh, the, the, the terrain is very, very harsh, they are not progressing that fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reported the news here very shortly. You can see that. Haven't you heard about how did your Lord deal with this people, the great town? But he didn't tell us exactly how, did he? Not in the, we don't know. He's just saying that these people have been dealt with. We don't know how. Okay. So now we go to Surah Fussilat chapter 41. And let's see how, if we have more details. Starting from verse 15. وأما عاد فاستكبروا في الأرض بغير الحق وقالوا من أشد منا قوة. Now Allah is going to tell us what were the negative qualities of these people, of this community. As for عاد, they behaved arrogantly through the land against all truth and reason without any justification and said, who is superior to us in strength? <coughs> Many nations today on earth, they claim that they are the strongest nations in the world. They have the most mighty army and navy and nuclear submarines and uh, air to air <laughs> missiles, air to air missiles, and so on. So the negative attributes of these people, that they were so arrogant, and they claim no one else can match their might. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to them. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةِ وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ What? Did they not see that Allah who created them was superior to them in strength? But they continued to reject our signs. Then the news comes. فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا صَرْصَرًا فِي أَيَّامِ النَّحِسَاتِ لِنُذِيقَهُمْ عَذَابَ الْخِزِّ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْعَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَخْزَى وَهُمْ لَا يُنْصَرُونَ So we sent against them a furious wind through days of disaster that we might give them a taste of a punishment of humiliation in this life. But the penalty of the hereafter will be more humiliating still, and they will find no help. So in this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the news of the storm from a different angle. We don't know how many days. He said, fi ayamin nahisat. Through days of disaster. Nahs means bad omen. When you say to someone, uh, this is a source of bad omen, you, you, you call him Nahs. In Surah Hud, chapter 11, Hud now is the name of the Prophet, والسلام, and this uh, chapter has the name of the Prophet, Hud. It's going to give us more details about the relationship between the Prophet and his community. And to Ad, we send their brother Hud. Their brotherhood was sent to Ad. I remember a few years ago, I said our, uh, it was Christmas time, and I said my, our dear Christian brothers and sisters are celebrating Christmas today. So someone sent me a letter condemning me for calling them brothers and sisters. And they said, Dr. Fahim, you should not call them brothers and sisters. They are not. So I responded back to him by saying the Quran clearly says that Ad was the brother of Hud, that Tamud was the brother of Salih was the brother of Hud, that, and so on. I rep reported from the Quran that the word the brother, Allah uses it all the time with the Prophet to his nasty people. Anyway, what was the message? Oh, my people worship Allah, you have no other God but Him. You do nothing but fabricating lies against Allah. O oh my people, I do not ask you a reward or to pay me for what I am delivering to you. My reward comes from the one who created me. Have you no sense? Can't you reflect? O oh my people, ask for forgiveness of your Lord and repent or turn towards him in repentance. What will happen? 
these people were suffering from a major drought at that time, a major drought. So the messenger is saying, وَيَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ O my people, ask for forgiveness of your sins from your Lord and turn toward the same in repentance as a result of this يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا He will send enough rain from heavens, from the skies, to water your land. He will not send a rain which will cause flooding and destruction to your crops. He will send rain which will help you. وَيَزِدُكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ And he will increase your strength, your power. You will have more strength. وَلَا تَتَوَلَّوْ مُجْرِمِينَ And don't turn back and become criminals or continue to, con to commit sins. The message was delivered by Hood and the response was, Oh, Hood, you haven't brought us a clear sign and we are not going to leave our gods as a result of what you've been telling us and we are not going to believe in you. I think the only explanation we have is that some misfortune has touched you from our gods. The gods exactly as they said to Ibrahim. <coughs> so he made a very clear statement. He said to them, I detach myself fully from the gods you are worshipping. I do not associate any partners with the one true God. May Allah act as a witness and all of you to act as witnesses that any bari um mimma tushrikun. I have nothing to do. I am free from the sin of ascribing any partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni tawakkaltu ala Allahi rabbi wa rabbikum. I put my full trust in Allah. My Lord and your Lord. There is no single creature on earth, but Allah has full control over it. My Lord is on straight path. Inna rabbi ala sarat al-mustaqeem. When the command came, it, again in here we, doesn't, we don't know what was the punishment. When the command came, we saved Hud and those who believed with him and we saved them from a grievous or a major punishment. At the end of the report, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a summary of why he did that. Such were the Arab people, they rejected the signs of their Lord and cherisher, disobeyed his messengers, and followed the command of every powerful, obstinate transgressor. Most of the countries which have been destroyed, or most of the communities which have been destroyed and explained in the Quran, was because of the tyrant rulers who ruled the people and the people agreed or accepted their ruling. When Pharaoh was destroyed, it was exactly the same. The people of Noah, the people of Saleh, the people of Madian, and so on. So when we talk about the people at the top, when they are tyrants, when they are arrogant, when they mislead the people and the people agree to what they are saying, they will all be destroyed together. They have been followed with a curse in this life. And on the day of judgment, there will be another curse. They were pursued by a curse in this life. And on the day of judgment, another curse. So the, the curse in this life was the destruction. And the curse on the day of judgment will be the hellfire. Ad rejected the, their Lord and cherisher. So away with Ad, the people of Hud. Now let me move to Surat Ash-Shu'ara, chapter 26. Now these people actually, according to verse 1 to 9, a, a modern, a contemporary explanation of the verse, it says that these people even were pioneers in uh, organ transplant, and they had factories to manufacture these organs as well. So I'm going to read the verses and uh, you can 
interpret it the way you like. Starting from verse 1 to 3. The Ad people rejected the messengers. Their brotherhood said to them, Do you not fear Allah? I am a messenger from Him, trustworthy, so fear Allah and obey me. I do not ask you for a reward. My reward is from Allah, the Lord of the world. Then comes here what they were doing. أَتَبْنُونَ بِكُلِّ رِيعٍ آيَةً تَعْبَثُونَ Do you build monuments on every high place in vanity and erect castles, hoping that you will live forever? When you lay hands upon anyone, you do so as tyrants. Do you build a landmark on every high place to amuse yourselves? And do you get for yourselves fine buildings in the hope of living therein forever? And when you strike, you strike like tyrants. So the verse, which is recently interpreted as they manufacture organs so that they can live forever, is verse 129, chapter 26. So fear Allah and obey me. Fear the one who has given you children. Benin actually is his sons and cattle, gardens and springs. I am so concerned that you will face a major punishment. So they said to him, whether you advise us, whether you admonish us or not, we don't care. What's going to happen is what happened to all the generations before us. They came and gone. There will be no life after death. In Surat Al-Ahqaf, chapter 46, <laughs> Again, starting from verse 21, very similar to what we heard before, that Ad came to his people and he was admonishing them and advising them and they ignored his uh, message. So now the country is suffering from a major drought. And they said to him, if your God is going to bring or send a punishment, let him do it now. So he said, he will do it whenever he wants. I have no authority or power to ask Allah to send it now or to cause it to come now. In verse 24, we read, when they saw a cloud advancing towards their valleys, they said, this cloud will give us rain. No. He responded, no. It is the calamity you were asking to be hastened. A wind wherein a grievous punishment, a painful punishment is there. Everything will it destroy by the command of its Lord. Then by the morning, there was nothing to be seen but the ruins of their houses. Thus do we recompense those given to sin. Let me, let me stop for a few seconds and try to explain this verse. They saw a cloud coming and they, saw, they, they thought it is rain. But the cloud was the storm which was going to destroy them. To them miracle shay in bi amir rabbi. It is to destroy everything by the command of its Lord. I think I'm going to, st to stop here because now the time is 25 past 12. I'm going to stop here and next week, inshallah, we'll continue the story of Ad, Hud, and then we will go into Nuh and Saleh for Thamud, inshallah. So, so I have to stop here because now 25 past 12 and we'll just have the collection very quickly and a few announcements to make. We have here two lovely brothers from Gardens of Peace. I'm, I'm, well, actually, yesterday in the uh, trustee meeting, we thought that it would be a very good idea that the, the masjid here and the community will be associated with the Gardens of Peace. I'm sure we are all aware of Gardens of Peace, the burial grounds 
in Hainaut, one of the most well-organized and well-run places in Britain, maybe. Uh, they are now willing to pick up the body of the deceased person, do the washing, the ghusl, and the kafan, and they will bring the body here for prayers. They also have prayers facilities at the graveyard, so we can do it again there. So we'll have, we can do it twice. The reward is more. And I personally, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that I will die in this country, in this land, I would like myself to be buried there and for them to do my ghusl and my kafan, inshallah. So uh, just to let you know, and, and we will put their details on our website, so this is going to come to us at any time. But I ask you please for one favor. Can you guarantee Jannah for the first five years? <laughs> if you can do this, we'll be all right, inshallah. So just stand up, both of you, please. Let the people see you, please. Yes, these are two wonderful brothers from, from, from the Gardens of Peace, and they have been doing a great, great job. And please make sure you have the details of the Gardens of Peace on your mobile because we don't know when we are going to leave. Shukran. Thank you very much. Thank you. Where is Yusuf? Uh, Dr. May, could you also mention that the details of the facilities at that will be on our website? With the link? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If everything will be on our website, inshallah. Okay? Uh, the facilities they have there for Ghusl, as I said earlier, and the mosque. They have a, a prayer room, huge prayer room as well, in, 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 on the side. Yusuf, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la As you know, we have already had the Adhan at uh, 5 to 12, and we already have done our Sunnah, okay? So after you finish the Jama'ah, inshallah, if you could kindly, please, if you want to do your Sunnah, stay in one side to allow people to go out and for the other people to come in. <laughs>